linkable data, audits and research and health surveillance. So Douglas is gonna to talk to you about Research Terminologies Australia or the Rosetta. Okay, thanks very much. Um, um, I'll not do much more in the way of introductions to myself, but suffice to say, I'm, I'm just a really enthusiast in uh, health data science and actually making things happen in terms of research. And that's my area. Um, the first thing I want to do really is, is introduce an organization they might not be familiar with, the Australian Health Research Alliance. Um, this alliance is a mechanism for bringing together all the advanced health research translation centers and centers for rural innovation across Australia. And uh, certainly I've seen this as a real potential vehicle for trying to bring a voice um, to things like national projects, specifically in the health arena that you can see here. Our challenge is always the competitive nature of research and really trying to bring things together. Uh, so under the auspices of ARA, uh, I was lucky enough to be able to lead uh, a new national systems level initiative uh, back from about how we can bring forward things at a national level around data quality assessment terminologies and mappings and common data models. So this doesn't mean reinventing the wheel, it really means uh, trying to take what's out there and think, well, how can we actually build on what is there uh, to do something better? The health domain, of course, has for many years had a huge amount of work in this sort of vocabulary space, uh, SNOMED clinical terms being a prime example. Of course, this is our national terminology. Uh, we pay internationally for access to this, and we've got a system that's been developed by CSIRO, which acts to curate the rules under which we're allowed to use SNOMED clinical terms in an onto server. Um, huge in the space in healthcare, of course, is fire as well. Now, as a, as a researcher, having things like this, having this interoperability in, in the health systems is a great thing. But I would say that there are some limitations in it and in that it's vast. Uh, you know, so if you're actually going to sit down there and try to implement uh, FHIR, um, you know, it actually takes quite a lot of knowledge to do so. Um, that's not necessarily surprising, but it certainly is one of the limitations in the implementation. And, and this is a real world example. This is a, a, a GP computer system I came across a few years in Australia. And this lets you see the referential integrity across the tables. There's thousands of tables. And in fact, this particular one was developed in Russia and all the documentations in Cyrillic. So I was struggling a little bit with this one, I'll tell you. Um, so data is not necessarily conformant. That's the problem. So as a researcher, um, I'm really interested in the, in the vast array of data that's out there. And if we look at this example, I just looked through some tables from two GP computer systems around diagnostic past history. And the first thing to know about this is 40% of all the data in, the, in these tables, which are where the main coded data resides, is not coded at all. So there are no codes. And what you're seeing here is lots of examples um, of spelling mistakes or abbreviations and things. So you know, if you're gonna try and define, all right, what do I need to do for a national indicator around type two diabetes? You can see there's an awful lot you might want to pick out of here, but there are some things you wouldn't. Um, you know, so these are the, the challenges in that curation. I've, I think we've heard a few times today, there's not always a single definition. Sometimes you're having to curate different definitions for slightly different purposes, but how do you um, actually achieve that? Um, and when we looked at this further, we were actually looking at what happens around national returns uh, as part of um, national indicators. Um, and what we found is that, okay, there's 40% of data that's not coded, but of course, people have more than one piece of information in the record. So we can often pick up coded data or more recent information. But what we're finding is like COPD, constructive uh, uh, oh, see you, obstructive pulmonary disease. Oh, no. Thank you. <laughs> Got your head around that one. Um, you can see that's missing 12.1%. Uh, so that, that's basically meaning that national indicators are undercounting by over 12% there. 
So what can we do about that? So th this is where I've been thinking, um, is there a way that we can uh, bring data uh, together in a way that could be community curated? Because the problem is there isn't one source of truth. We've got different vendors, we've got people that are spending a lot of time doing these mappings and then they're very protective about them because of the effort that they've put in to create them in the first place. And we, we even have very simple examples like here we've got the Meteor uh, codes for uh, sex. Uh, and yet probably every single system I encounter has got a different set of abbreviations for sex. So where can I go to find that out or do I need to reinvent the wheel every time? So um, where I'd like to get to uh, and where I'm working is in converting large hospital model. And it's when you try to do these things that all these issues arise. Um, the advantage of a common data model here is, is that on the left, we've got um, all of the health concepts uh, down to about 15 tables. So we're not talking about that diagram that you saw before. And we're not talking about the complexity of fire and structures. Um, it's much closer to what researchers can actually deal with. Um, and of course, it's, it's about a common data structure, but also a common vocabulary, which is really important. And this is based largely on SNOMED, but not entirely. So one of the challenges we face still in healthcare is some of the mappings and things we do, SNOMED isn't necessarily always the destination, uh, although it's very commonly there. Uh, this is just, uh, if you get copies of these slides later, these are some of the tools that allow you to convert to this common data model. Uh, so there's lots of stuff out there in this open international community and uh, over 2 billion records have been converted to this over the years. So it's, it's been very useful in things like uh, COVID research. Um, so that's all our challenges. So, you know, I look at the Rosetta Stone here. Um, they, they had some ideas how to fix this uh, in 196 BC uh, for other areas. Um, uh, so, you know, what can we learn? So really what I'm about here isn't necessarily about the new vocabularies, but how we can do community curation and mappings and things like that. Uh, so on the left here, we've got the idea of mappings that we, for instance, have generated in primary care. Um, and it's a diminishing return when you've got 100 million records with lots of information in. How far do you go mapping things like free text? Uh, so you can continually evolve these things and potentially if you've got the right tools then other groups can help you. Simple as that, really. Um, so in this example, we're just seeing if uh, a Western Australia researcher can actually build on what we've done uh, because they need to map specific things around their research questions and that helps move towards uh, greater mapping efforts. Uh, Michael Ollie is not uh, here today. Uh, he uh, is a source of all, of all knowledge in terms of onto server and snap to SNOMED at CSIRO, although he's going to be here for the rest of the week for the workshop. Uh, so please don't push me too hard in questions around onto server and snap to SNOMED. Um, but these are really key in our thinking. You know, we've been working through this with uh, the RDC and, and with CSIRO thinking. What can we do? I'll just take you through these tools a little bit. Um, so, I mean, onto server, as I, say, it, as I said earlier, underpins our national SNOMED capability. So that needs curated. But what I love about this model is lots of other people can run instances of onto server. So it's got the syndication idea. Um, and you can do your own things in this. So immediately I'm thinking, well, does that mean that the RDC could run its own copy of this for doing things around vocabularies and terminologies as well. Um, not uh, to replace what's already there, but you know, working towards uh, you know, how we um, advance the cause over the next few years. Um, one of the key things about this is, is this API connection, this fire link. Um, and what this means is that if you've got a third party software supplier, they can get regular updates to the underlying terminologies here, not just SNOMED, but anything that's on here. So I'm thinking, all right, well, does that mean then if I've got some custom mappings for type 2 diabetes and we're wanting to get all the third party vendors to be able to connect into that, 
could we use on to serve? So Michael says, yes, I'll take his word for that, you know. Um, um, uh, so, you know, this is fantastic, but also then it's just got a whole range of uh, use cases, including in things like um, validating uh, fire, um, but you can read them in here. In the interest of time, I'll not, uh, I'll not go through uh, all of this in detail. Um, so, yeah, because I want to get on to Snap to Snowmed. So, um, on to server, I mean, it's been taken up internationally. The UK, for instance, are hugely invested in using on to server. So I think this is another reason why I'm so interested in this platform is it's become a bit of an international de facto standard. It's recognized as, as a really, uh, you know, real huge contribution um, into the into this sort of terminology space, but specifically around uh, SNOMED. And what's happened is they've wanted to build better tools for doing the, the automated mapping to SNOMED. And this opens up some great doors as well. Actually, if I look, if, if I fix on the needs here first, some of the things they've got in here in, ensure traceability. So it's like provenance, you know, what are the different versions of any terminologies or things we put up here? Access control. So a lot of the things that I've been hearing talking about today are actually built into what they've been doing with Snap to SNOMED. Um, but of course, Snap to SNOMED is just fixed around converting to SNOMED largely at this time. Uh, but you see down the bottom here, they've got things like export to fire concept map is on the roadmap for next year. So there's just a whole lot of convergence stuff that's really going on here. Uh, so just quickly looking at some examples. Um, uh, so here we've got a map of common diseases. And what's happened is the automated tool has looked at these mappings are the equivalent or inexact. So it tells you about that, but also tell you, tells you who has reviewed things and when and whether it's accepted. So this just lets you see that a little bit better. So um, like any uh, working tool, um, the user interface is very important, but this is the sort of thing that I'd really like to be able to work on with non-coders, you know, getting people in the community to think, all right, how can we get consensus around some of this stuff? But the great thing is, is the huge massive start that's been made on onto server and snap to SNOMED around a lot of the key technical underpinnings of all of this. It's really fantastic. And there you are, that's the auto map will tell you how you complete you are. Um, and we, I've had quite a few researchers working with this and we get some really great feedback on it. It's some of these auto mapping tools are, are, are uh, not so good, but this one actually seems to be working extremely well. So uh, I'm just about to finish up here. So really where to now is we've got this real excitement and working with uh, the ARDC and CSIRO to think, can we actually do something around community curation in health in health terminologies. Um, so really to take that forward and say what the RDC is going to do next, I shall hand over to Ramin. Thank you all. Thanks, Dougie. Thanks very much for that. Can everyone hear me okay? Can everyone hear me okay? I can't see. Okay, thanks. Yes, you can, yeah. Thanks. These are the three areas that I'll briefly touch on during this part of the presentation. Collaboration, vocabulary service extension, and a thematic research data commons. And so in collaboration with University of Melbourne and CSIRO, ARDC will extend its existing vocabulary service to support researchers in the health and medical domain, a service which will be woven into the fabric of a digital health research infrastructure. Dougie described a vision for enabling shared access to health and medical terminologies and mappings, particularly resources that just may not be available through existing services, access to these resources and tools for their management, a discovery portal enabling access by people and software, and a service for supporting this community resource. ARDC provides a vocabulary service to the Australian research sector, 
comprising a registry, discovery portal, tools for managing vocabularies, and access points for people and software. And so why does it need to be extended? Well, as, as Dougie mentioned, the health system and health research domain uses specific international terminologies, such as SNOMED, with specific interoperability standards, such as FIRE. The ARDC vocabulary service will be extended to cover that content and those protocols to promote data standardization, integration, aggregation, and interoperability in health research. Naturally, there are variations in the implementation of such broad standards between jurisdictions, sectors, and services, and Dougie touched on this earlier. And so the new ARDC capability will also allow mapping between concepts as interpreted in these different contexts. As a national open research infrastructure, the ARDC capability will enable reuse of these resource intensive mappings by other research groups or health services. They'll no longer be siloed. ARDC will adopt and adapt the mature CSIRO developed Onto server and Snap to SNOMED applications and stand them up in a national infrastructure service framework for access and use by researchers across Australia. The instance will be optimized for research sector usage, so it will be flexible and customizable, but it'll be completely compatible and interoperable with the Australian Digital Health Agency's National Clinical Terminology Service. And the ARDC vocabulary service will be woven into the fabric of a digital health research infrastructure, a fabric a weaving together of themes, resources, and technologies, a fabric that has nationally focused capabilities that strengthen and support the broader digital research infrastructure system. That system is reflected here by the horizontals, such as people and policy and data and services a fabric that also has a deep focus on identified national challenges and opportunities. These are the verticals, examples such as HASS, people and planet. And so in returning to where I began, collaboration, service extension and digital health research infrastructure, ARDC is well placed to operate this national information infrastructure and in so doing, promote greater use of national and international standards develop national consensus on health research semantics and build greater national cohesion and coordination to support national scale research programs. Thanks 